All right. Hello. And thank you for joining the Homeschooling Virtual Expo. My name is Maya Etienne, and I will be talking about grief today. So I really appreciate that you were able to join my session. And I don't have a virtual booth. So, but I would love to hear your stories, your experience, any questions that you have. And so at the end of my presentation, I'll be sharing ways that you can connect with me on social media via Facebook, Instagram, or email. Okay, I'm gonna be sharing my screen now, one second. Okay, there we go. Sorry if that took you through a lot. Okay. Um, okay, again, my name is Maya Etienne and I have been homeschooling my two children for 12 years. Six years ago, we tragically lost my husband. As you can imagine, life turned upside down and I walked my grief journey solo while supporting my kids grief process. Now I advocate for companioning people in grief as a grief coach. Simply being present and non-judgmental can go a very long way. So thank you for letting me share some simple ways to give space for grief when it shows up in your home. Let's dive in to when grief comes to visit, compassionate tips to deal with grief while homeschooling. So what is grief? Grief is a natural response to death and loss. And no set length of time or intensity. Everyone experiences grief differently. Therefore, there is no one size fits all. There are some common, common stages that are char characterized as denial, shock, bargaining, depression, anger, and acceptance. I'm not going to spend much time on this, but I want to note that grief is not linear and cannot be charted. Therefore, if a person was in the bargaining stage for a period of time, and now they seem to be in anger, it does not indicate that they are almost complete with their process and will soon move on to acceptance. So what can bring about grief? So grief can be triggered by the loss of a family member, loss of friends, and that could look like a friend moving away. It can be a friend who used to homeschool now, now going to public school and really not, you know, not connecting with that friend anymore, a loss of a pet, um, or let's say if you're on the farm and a favorite farm animal, loss of job or a major source of income or any major life changes like moving, retirement or divorce. Now, I absolutely love homeschooling. It has been a real challenge at times, but the beauty of homeschooling is that when your family is hit with obstacles, trauma or grief, you can pivot and adjust your teaching style and schedule to fit the needs of your home. We've done unschooling, world schooling, co-ops and curriculum-based learning as we navigated the changes in our home. Let's face it, since 2020, I don't know anyone who has not had to deal with pivoting and obstacles. Having a go-to framework when life's misgivings grab a hold is invaluable. I'm going to break down practical steps to take into two parts. First, 
I'm going to give you steps when you as a parent are dealing with grief. Then I'm going to share useful steps to take when your children are experiencing grief. The strategies overlap, but from the parent's point of view, the actions are slightly different. All right, parents. So when my husband passed away, my earliest thoughts included, will I be able to continue homeschooling alone? Am I capable of managing this home solo? What does all of this look like going forward? So the plan had changed. Our plan was now morphing into my plan and it looked foreign, frightening, confusing, and unattainable. When you as the parent are hit with grief, it can affect every component of your life. Your easy routines can now seem insurmountable and homeschooling may be the furthest thing from your mind. What do you do? You use the hats approach. That's help, allow, time, and share. Okay, help. Asking for help does not come easy for everyone. If you are experiencing grief and simple tasks are beginning to feel overwhelming, I think it's time for you to ask for help. So asking a for assistance from friends, family members, and your homeschool community is not a sign of weakness. Grief shows up in ways to alert your circle of friends and family that you need extra care and support. So what kind of help should you ask for? Depending on how intense your grief is, you may not know what will be helpful. So we will start with the easy part. Never turn down help. Now, sometimes you don't know how somebody can help you, but if you don't know and someone says, hey, how can I be of service to you? How can I help your family? Ask them if you can get back to them. Say, hey, can I get, you know, I'm not really sure right now, but if you can give me your day or so, I can let you know. And then do that. But give yourself a little bit of time and don't close any doors to help because help doesn't always keep coming back around, circling around. So don't turn down help. Second, another way that you can ask for help is companionship. You can ask someone to just come and sit with you and, and be company and just, you know, they don't have to do anything or say anything, just hold space with you. Another great um, help is meal prep, especially if you are the person who's always cooking in the house. Um, and maybe you may not even feel like eating, but the kids still have to eat. So never turn down food, but um, food gift cards are a great um, a great thing you can ask for meal trains if there are, you know, a lot of people that are going to work together collectively. And then alone time, you know, your circle of friends and family can maybe take the kids out for a while for you. And then you can have some time alone to be able to process the feelings that you're going through and the loss and the change that you are experiencing. And the last thing I, I put down is resources. Maybe someone else has had um, a similar experience or, or maybe you feel stuck um, and you have to take care of some business after your loss and you need some help with resources. Um, that's always something you can ask for and allow yourself to receive help. All right. Um, allow emotions and flexibility. So allow yourself to feel the spectrum of emotions is healthy. It is healthy. 
instead of forcing away fears, feelings of anger, depression, fear, and anxiety, give a little space for those emotions to breathe and express your grief. Our society is mostly grief avoidant and we shun feelings that are perceived negatively, but all emotions serve a purpose and are important. Take Jenny. She's a homeschooling mother of three and has a wonderful husband. One of Jenny's parents passes away and Jenny feels as though she has to hold it together because her family is depending on her. Jenny keeps busy with all her normal activities and turns away from any signs of despair. I wanna tell Jenny, it's okay to take a homeschooling break. Even if you just took a break two weeks ago. Jenny, it is absolutely all right to spend an extra hour or two in bed because that's what you need. Pull the family together and go back to the first tip, help. Let your family know that I cannot do it all right now. I need everyone to add a little more effort so I can work through the emotions and feelings that are coming through me. Perhaps Jenny always cooks and quick snack foods are left for the weekends or pizza is a Friday food and today is Wednesday. Well, Jenny, if putting pizza in the oven on Wednesday will give you a much needed break and time and space to sit with your feelings, be flexible and veer a little bit from your schedule. Right, time. Are you a checklist or a to-do list kind of person? Do you thrive on accomplishing things? Do you get anxious when a task does not have a specific end time? Does your mind move faster than any other part of you? Well, you're not alone. I am always trying to get somewhere, do something, check something off the list, and start something new. When it comes to grief, it doesn't quite work like that. If you remember from the beginning of this presentation, I said there is no time frame with grief. There's no clock that will chime when it is all said and done and you are completed and you have completed grieving. So be patient with yourself. Your life, oh, excuse me, your life may feel upside down for longer than you could have imagined. You may become physically ready to get on with life, but not mentally ready for some time. Remember, remind yourself that grief is a necessary process to help you deal with the change and loss you have experienced. Giving yourself time to feel through your journey will help you better integrate the loss you have experienced into your days ahead. Share. So when good news reaches us, we take every opportunity to multiply our joy by sharing the news with friends and family. Feelings of jubilee wash over us as we recount stories of triumph and achievement. The stories bring about contagious, warm smiles and accolades. So why would we share a story of anguish? Let's take a look at Jenny again. Jenny lost her parent, but no one outside of her immediate family knows. Because of that, no one is calling to check up on her. None of her friends are praying for her. No one is reaching out to provide comfort to her and her family. No one knows that she needs help and care, patience and support. When you share your story, you are sharing your heavy burden with others. 
every time you are able to tell your story, you release a little more of the hold you have on the pain and grief. It's like carrying a backpack of bricks on your back. Oh, that's so heavy, right? Every time you share, a tiny bit of brick is released and less weight is on you. Share for support and your healing. To recap, that's HATS. Stands for help, allow, time, and share. These tips are only scratching the surface of good practices to incorporate when grief comes to visit. Now I'll walk you through the tips for you when your children are showing signs of grief. All right, here's for our students. As your child's parent and teacher, you are the first person who will be able to notice a change or difference in your child. The following tips and examples are intentionally crafted for you to take their lead role as a supporter while your child responds to the, to the changes happening in their world. Chat stands for compassion, help, allow, time and support. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so we all love our children and want to provide the best growing and developing opportunities as possible. The complexity of feelings and emotions that come with grief may not be easy to verbalize and share as a kid. This is where you come in. Meet Duke. He's been homeschooled all his 10 years of life. Duke's best friend has recently moved. Duke has been extremely irritable. He picks fights with his siblings more often than not and walks around with a chip on his shoulder. Moms and dads, what do you do? It is unacceptable for Duke to take out his feelings on everyone else in the house. How do you give Duke extra compassion? First, empathize with Duke's emotions and explain why you think he may be having those emotions. Then let Duke know these feelings are natural and share an experience if you have one that is similar. When we open up to our children about our own experiences, they are more likely to feel comfortable to do the same. So set ground rules on what is acceptable in the house when he starts feeling emotionally overwhelmed. Some examples could, it could be, ask for time alone, ask for special time with a parent, ask for tools or resources to start a new hobby or project. Grief can show up in different ways and it may not always be obvious. As parents, we can help our children express their feelings through writing prompts, art expression, music, and dance. These are healthy ways a child who may not be able to verbalize their current sensitivities can give you a glimpse into their minds. The prompts, can be used across the board of writing, art, music, dance, and more. Okay, so this morning I noticed that Duke seems a little more solemn than usual, and he does not seem to want to talk. I tell Duke he can pick the next activity we do, writing, art, music, or dance. He picks art. Now I let Duke pick between the following three prompts to finish the sentence. Okay, today I feel like, and let him express himself through art. It can be drawing, it can be digital art, it can be clay, whatever Duke or your child enjoys doing. When I think about what happened, I feel, and put it all on the paper. 
Put it all out there. And your, if he's dancing, put it all out there. And sometimes I feel afraid that help your children express themselves as much as possible and be a companion to their process. Okay, Duke's life has completely changed. He no longer gets to hang out with his friend on random days throughout the week. He does not get to see his friend at the extracurricular classes they both signed up for. He still talks to his friend, but it's just not the same. The distance is felt. There's so much more time in the day. And now Duke is figuring out how to reorganize his life, his fun and his friendship. I'm a hugging, cuddling mom. I wanna wrap my arms around all my children and protect them from any hurts and pains. I wanna shield them. I have a daughter and a son. When my husband passed, my daughter would not let me touch her for years. It was the most devastating experience for me. We were all hurting and yet I could not give to my daughter the way I wanted to. I learned to give her space and ask questions. Going back to tip number two, I asked, how can I help? And is this helpful? And do you need space? All right, we're gonna give our kids the time necessary. Grief may show up in waves and there is no time limit for how long grief will stay with your child. So try to resist telling your child they need to get over it. Try to resist comparing your child's experience in an effort to get them to snap out of it. Try to remember that if you are feeling agitated or frustrated, by your child's grief experience, how much worse they must feel as the primary person enduring the process. Your child is building their resilience for adversity and obstacles. That takes time, care, and support. Sincere words of encouragement go a long way. Duke, I saw how hard you took it when your friend moved. I know you have some tough days, but you are doing awesome. And I love that you keep expressing your feelings and trying new things to capture your, your interest. Keep up the good work. Let's support their process. Let's support their process without judgment. It's not your job to find them a new best friend. It's not your job to make them feel better. It's your job to support them and give them opportunities to feel through their emotions. If Duke becomes antisocial for a while, that's completely okay. Keeping the conversation active and present will reassure Duke that he has support and a great family cheering for him. All right, so we are at the close now. Let me just recap one more time what CHATS is. It's compassion, help, allow, time, and support. Thank you again for joining my presentation and spending about 20 minutes with me. I truly hope that this information will be useful to your family now or in the future. If your family is currently dealing with grief, I hold space for you and your family as you navigate through this process. Please share this information with anyone you may find who may find it useful. When it comes to grief and loss, support, helping hands, and education make all the difference. Again, I am Maya ATN, a widowed warrior, and you can find me 
on Facebook and Instagram. I'm also connected to the Homeschool Expo on their Facebook and Instagram pages. Don't be a stranger and reach out. I'd love to hear your, your experience, challenges, and breakthroughs. So please uh, send me a message. Uh, I look forward to hearing your stories. Let me know any feedback, any, any topics that maybe you want to hear the next time, because I'd love to come back and share again with all of you. Bye-bye now.